Um, all right, well, thanks for coming tonight. Um, uh, my name is Doug Haney, I'm with Corgan. Uh, we're working with the district over the last two years on the bond planning and uh, the first phase of projects, and now we're in the second phase of projects. I've got Mark Trance over there. Uh, he's been working on a lot of the phase one projects, and he's going to be working on this project uh, uh, as well, the Walnut Springs relocation and Dripping Springs Middle School renovation. Um, thanks for coming tonight. Um, you know, we uh, originally kind of had community meetings and a lot of kind of information gathering and feedback back in the program. The first couple of months we spent programming uh, the project and over the last six or seven weeks we've actually moved into schematic design and we've got a couple of schemes for you guys to kind of look at, kind of see where we are and to get some feedback and, and some input on and, and so we really appreciate your time tonight. I know that there's a lot of other stuff going on that, that everyone can be doing so we really appreciate y'all's y'all's input. It really helps us kind of get to hopefully where we need to go for uh, the students and the teachers. So, uh, to kind of remind everybody kind of what the scope is, we're obviously relocating this school, Walnut Springs Elementary School, uh, over to the Dripping Springs Middle School site. Um, the building is going to accommodate about 850 students. Um, while we're doing that, that's obviously going to necessitate some parking and traffic for parent pickup and drop off, bus pickup and drop off, and things like that. Uh, that's a big part of the design as well, so we'll be kind of working through that, and we've been looking at doing that as well. Um, where, where kind of a lot of the construction could happen and potentially will happen, uh, that's where the existing wastewater treatment plant is, which is big enough for the existing middle school, but it wouldn't be big enough for the added square footage of the new elementary school. So uh, we'll be taking that away and kind of connecting into an adjacent development property uh, to kind of take care of those sanitary needs. So that's part of this project as well. Uh, and then the third part of the project is, is actually going into the middle school and doing a number of assessment items uh, to kind of fix some of the infrastructure, mechanical, electrical, plumbing kind of things within the building, uh, but also kind of provide some areas and kind of specific renovations for collaboration and special ed uh, spaces and things like that. So there'll actually be some improvements from a renovation standpoint there in the middle school as well. The timeline that we're working with is again, we started earlier this year, we spent about two months programming and schematic design in the end is gonna be about seven or eight weeks as well. We'll be finishing up, kind of moving through what we call design development, where we get kind of a lot of our consultants involved uh, to kind of take it from a floor plan and a building mass to an actual building that actually works and things like that. So we'll get structural and MEP technology and civil and kind of all those uh, groups involved. Uh, we'll be finished with that process late September, early October, and then we'll be finishing the documents in January. And at that point, we'll put it out for bidding. We've got a construction manager now on board, so they're going to be involved not only kind of in the bidding process later on, but also to kind of help give us kind of feedback while we're doing the design and documentation. Uh, they'll bid it out kind of February, have information back March. We'll be taking that to the board for their kind of review. And if everything kind of looks good, then we can kind of move forward with construction in April of 2020. And then we've got about 14 months for construction building the new part of the construction would be kind of built finished about May 2021 to give furniture and kitchen and kind of all the, the the district kind of infrastructure kind of come in and get the building ready for teachers and students and then the renovation portions of the middle school would be done over that summer we obviously kind of want to limit the amount of construction inside the building that takes place during the school year so that that type of construction would be kind of extended into to June and July and would be ready for uh, August of 2021. So the overall project would be finished in August of 2021, and the kids and teachers would be able to move in. And this is just a little bit more of uh, kind of the timeline and things like that. But you can kind of see May 2021 for a new construction complete, and July 2021 for the renovation construction complete. So, um, once we were finished with the programming, which again, to kind of remind everybody, we went to the teachers, we went to you guys, the community, we went to a lot of different groups, we had kind of an online survey, but we kind of 
we went and, exist and visited the existing building, we gathered that documentation, we did kind of a lot of infrastructure kind of look and things like that. We gathered all that information and that basically gives us kind of all this stuff to kind of sift through before we even start design because the more we kind of know right at that outset, the better we can kind of start moving in the right direction once we actually start designing. So we did that for the first two months and that's the compile review program information. And at the beginning of June, uh, we kind of set a design committee of, of district personnel to kind of come in so that us as a design team, Corgan as a design team, we could kind of work on different schemes and then take it to that design review committee, get good feedback and, and kind of narrow down kind of the, the designs that we were looking at. We've had three of those meetings. The, the third one was earlier today. Um, the first one, was after about the first three weeks and that meeting we're really looking at as many different options as possible. We want to look at at kind of where the building can go on site. There's seven or eight different places the building can go on site. We want to look at one and two story schemes. We want to look at how the, the new construction connects to the existing construction. Does it, does it connect and is there kind of uh, elementary school programming in the existing building, does it connect but it's kind of the two things are a little bit different or is it kind of not connect but there's kind of an outdoor connection, things like that. So we kind of look at all those different schemes and really what we're trying to do is generate discussion. You know, what, what works, what doesn't work, what comparing and contrasting the, the different schemes and things like that. We narrowed that down to about four schemes, went back and worked on it for a few weeks, came back with the review meeting number two, and now we looked at six or seven schemes, or different versions of those four schemes, and kind of did the same thing. You're comparing and contrasting, you're, you're saying I like this element, or I like this scheme, but I like these elements from these other schemes, and you're kind of piecing that together into something that, again, gets us a little bit closer and closer to uh, a final design. And then today we looked at two versions of two different schemes and we got good feedback on those two and those two would be the ones that we kind of look at today and, and we want to kind of get some of y'all's feedback on what y'all think of kind of where we are right now. So we're going to take that information that we're going to get from you, we're going to take the information that we got earlier today from the design review committee, we presented it to the board last night. Um, We've got a survey going out with four or five questions to kind of get some feedback from that standpoint for, for community members that can't be here tonight. Uh, and then like I said, we're going to get our construction manager to kind of also take a look at it from a budgeting standpoint to see if there a difference in scheme of cost and things like that to kind of make sure that we're meeting those kind of uh, financial requirements. Uh, and then once we kind of get all that, you know, there will probably be a direction kind of one path or another and at that point we'll take that scheme and then we'll move into that design development. And then we'll kind of repeat the process where we'll come back two more times to that design review committee as we get kind of taking it from a plan to an actual building. And then we'll do this again at the end of design development. We'll come back with something that's kind of 90, 95% done and y'all can kind of give your input and feedback on, on that point as well. So to again kind of familiarize yourself with uh, the overall site, and I'm sorry it probably isn't 100% clear to, to read this with the lighting, but you've got, you've got 290 kind of going east-west across the top of the site. Um, you've got Tiger Lane that kind of spurs off of 290 right there that you access into the middle school right now. You've got uh, Peabody Lane right here leading to this neighborhood down here. The existing uh, middle school has kind of five what I would call fingers that kind of stick down. You've got kind of some east-west corridors. You've got these fingers that kind of stick down to the south. You've got a big open field area right here to the south, and you've also got kind of more um, open area here, but a little bit more trees and things like that. And then here's where kind of the neighborhood starts back here. You've got some district facility offices back here, uh, all the way, you've got some shop buildings kind of over here. The stadium's right here, and then you've got parking and tennis courts kind of up, up over there uh, to the northwest part of the campus. and then. The, the site actually extends down here, and there's kind of a creek down here as well. So that was kind of the site that we were looking at. And so I might have you go back and forth from uh, the site back to this. So this is kind of that first design review meeting that we go over. You can kind of see that we're looking at a lot of different mediums, and 
we're actually sitting down and doing a lot of sketching. And you know, you're looking at you know the, the kind of what I what I say for this first design review meeting is that we're trying to generate discussion. We want to generate discussion so that we can take something and then look at it from different ways and see if that's something that we like or we don't like and things like that. So you can kind of see that that you know we're putting um, we're putting the oh that works for there. Um, <laughs> we're putting like this is a scheme where we had we got some some feedback, you know, is there a way to put the building up to the northwest? So we actually kind of did a scheme where we did that. You know, what are the pros and cons? How does it attach to the existing building? How does parking traffic, how do students get from inside the building to a playground or to a play field, kind of things like that. We start looking at different shapes and, and you know, kind of ways of configuring the building. Some of these schemes are two stories, some are one story. Uh, some kind of match up a little bit with kind of the scheme of, of kind of the finger scheme, so I'm kind of going a little bit of a different connection. But again, the idea is to throw out a wide variety of stuff. Some of the stuff we kind of know isn't going to work, but we need to look at that to kind of see why it doesn't work, or maybe there's something that's really cool there that we want to take and move to a different scheme or something like that. But this is why we look at 10 or 11 or 12 different schemes to kind of go through and figure out what we like and what we don't like. None of this is a building yet, none of it's even a floor plan, it's really a lot of diagrams of kind of how things are connecting and how things are relating to each other. And the review team did just a fantastic idea of really giving us great feedback. Some of it was pretty harsh feedback, which is what we like. Uh, we, don't, we don't get our feelings hurt or anything like that. So, um, but we had about a four hour meeting kind of where we went through all these things. And what we kind of came out with is that we wanted about four or five schemes, you know, that seem to make sense to kind of, hey, this seems to be moving in the right direction, let's develop that further. And so that's what we did. We took those schemes and we developed them further. These were schemes that seemed to meet, you know, both the functional kind of needs of what needs to go on inside the building educationally. Uh, they seem to kind of have a relationship to the existing middle school that from a site and from a campus situation seemed to work. Um, and they seem, you know, that they could potentially kind of turn into kind of an interesting building that would kind of fit on that campus and kind of meet kind of the needs of, of what the teachers and the community wanted from an overall kind of how does the building look and feel on the campus and things like that. So you can kind of see, you start seeing a little bit more uniformity with kind of how we're working with our kind of design tools and sketching and computer stuff and things like that. At this point, we really started looking at kind of more of the functional needs on the site, like bus traffic and parent pick up and drop off, how that works with the adjacent rows and things like that. So we, you know, because we're a little bit more detailed with what we're going to do, we kind of start looking at a little bit more of those functional things from a site standpoint. Um, and again, this was like a three and a half meeting, lots of great feedback, lots of, you know, kind of this works, this doesn't, you know, I like this, but this scheme is better, can you move this over here, and kind of things like that. I kind of call it kind of the Frankenstein design kind of process, you're kind of picking and pulling and kind of putting it all together into something that kind of works. And it, you know, it really kind of gets us, you know, I think kind of, again, headed down uh, that funnel to something that, that really works specifically for you guys. So, that's where we kind of had our meeting earlier today. From that second meeting, we picked two schemes that we like. And then what we do internally is that we try to do two versions of that scheme. So the overall kind of scheme has certain elements, but then we want to look at it in a little bit of a different way, kind of see, because there's no one right solution to do these. There's 50 different ways that you can design this building. It's trying to focus on what's the right solution for the teachers and for the students and for this community, and that's what we're trying to get to. So kind of looking at, at different versions of a scheme to see what works and what doesn't work uh, it seems to, to to work really well. So um, the two schemes that we have are very different schemes, which is a great thing. Um, you now what we want to do is we want to give you guys options so that, that, you know, there's, again, there's no one way to solve this. And if we can kind of get to a point where we're down to a couple of different ways, but they're very different, that really kind of promotes a lot of discussion about what works best for this particular site and for the community that, that's involved. So um, what we're looking at here and I'll take it from a site plan and then I'll move down to the actual floor plan in general. Uh, one of the first things that we have to solve is how to get kids to and from uh, the school in the morning and the afternoon. And, and um, you know, right off the bat, uh, we know that 
that you know just from a neighborhood standpoint here we wanted to really minimize the traffic for the, the Peabody residents over here they already kind of sometimes deal with some heavy traffic over there and so we wanted to make sure that we uh, didn't increase kind of that traffic and so the hope was is that we would be able to from the north kind of get get cars and buses kind of into and off the, the site and I think you know, we've got a couple of different ways we're doing that and we're still kind of looking and investigating a little bit more we've We've got kind of a traffic study that we're, we're doing and, and we're going to get we're getting input from text docs from, from some other people and things like that so we're kind of doing uh continuing to do kind of research on what works and and what seems to be kind of the best path to move forward with but this particular scheme is that we're going to have some controls on the entry kind of up uh, to the northeast of the site to where you're going to have to kind of enter into the site from the west so you know you kind of you're coming from 290, you kind of come over here to the stoplight over here and kind of come back here. And then again, the object is to have lots of stack space so that you can kind of pull that traffic off of 290 or off Tiger Lane or off the street and you get that on the site. And so this is kind of a scheme where you can see there's a pretty substantial amount of stack space, even if you have 50, 60, 70 cars kind of waiting to pick up or drop off, you know, you pull those off onto your site so that you're not kind of harming traffic or, or creating congestion as much as possible. You have kind of a, a drop-off kind of right here in front of the school and they would kind of loop back around and then exit back on and be able to get back on to 290 from that standpoint. From a bus standpoint, the middle school busing kind of comes in over here and picks up right here. We kind of continue that trend, but the elementary school buses would kind of come over here and pick up the school back here and then exit back out on the Tiger Lane to 290. So uh, we think that that kind of solution kind of again, it, it, it kind of spreads things out. You've got four different kind of entries for middle <coughs> school and elementary school bus parking and parent um, uh, pick up and drop off. And you've been able to kind of keep uh, the Peabody uh, lane a little bit open so that we're not adding traffic there. From a site standpoint, one of the really big issues that came up in the programming that we did for both the elementary school and the middle school is that connection from inside to outside. And, and so we knew right off the bat, and and the design of this building, we're not just designing the building, we're also designing kind of the exterior spaces between the two buildings, and also kind of making sure that we provide as much easy access to the outdoor areas as well. Those educational opportunities are, are just as important as kind of the internal educational opportunities. So when we were first looking at our, our location of where we were going to put the building on the site, again, we probably had it in six or seven different locations. We had it up there, we had it right here, we had it down here, we had it over here, we had it right here, we had it over here. And what really kind of came out of all this is from a middle school standpoint, we really wanted to leave this as much open as possible. In the discussions with them, one of the things that really became important and their main concern was there's a lot of things that work really well here and you know we want to make sure that we're not doing anything with the new building or kind of how the site's going to be reconfigured that would take away from the really good things that, that, that we enjoy and that we like and the students uh, <coughs> kind of really work with the students. So, you know, this became a real priority is trying to leave this as open as possible and kind of allow kind of those kids to come out of the gymnasiums and things like that to have access to the track and the field and also to have access to these fields down here. So I think in this game we're, we were able, able to do that. Um, and then from an elementary standpoint, the desire was you know, we've got different age kids and things like that. We want to make sure that we have an outdoor area that's specifically ours. There are certainly opportunities to share some outdoor spaces with the middle school if that's something that the teachers and kind of in both levels want to do. And we'll kind of create some opportunities kind of between the two schools. But we need an outdoor space for playground and for track and for field that's specifically uh, kind of set out for the elementary school. And so that's kind of this area down here where we're able to kind of put a full-size track that they've got uh, now and kind of we'll be able to duplicate that. You know, we've talked about some different ways of doing that. Is it through the trees or is it kind of over here? But the idea is that we've got outdoor space for elementary school, including kind of some playground areas, and we've got outdoor space specifically for the middle schools. And then from a site standpoint, again, you, you know, the existing building is full of these little courtyards, and there's a lot of different things kind of throughout that take place in those courtyards. Some of them are educational, some of them like outside of the cafeteria where a recess happens and kind of things like that. And so we're kind of creating some of those areas too. And so we're going to be looking at opportunities kind of in this scheme to kind of create some of those kind of neat things that kind of go on right adjacent to the school 
you know, we talked about maybe some areas where middle school and elementary school collaborate outside, and we kind of looked at this maybe area right here. We could do like an amphitheater or kind of something like that to where there'd be some opportunities to get out there and do some, you know, kind of concerts or plays or, or kind of whatever you might want to do out there. Uh, so we kind of like how this worked with it starts mirroring kind of what's going on in the existing, uh, in the existing school. Um, so this scheme in particular is a two-story scheme. Uh, you've got two stories right here. You've got an in-between two-story area right there. The two-story area right here, and then you get kind of your gym and cafeteria. These are one story, but they're kind of double height spaces. Um, another thing that we kind of talked about from a site standpoint is, you know, kind of not getting right next to the neighborhood and, you know, building something kind of right back or tearing down a lot of these trees. So, you know, the hope is that back here we feel to leave as many trees as possible and even back into here trying to leave as many trees as possible and, and trying to push the building as far away from, from the, this neighborhood area down here. So that's kind of that site. So moving into the floor plan, again, it's a two-story scheme. So this is the first story right here, second story right here. And I'll start on the second floor, and then I'll kind of move downstairs. Uh, the second floor is kind of a basic H floor plan. Um, there are different ways of kind of doing grade levels. And this kind of takes a neighborhood or a pod uh, kind of concept. And you look at this being fifth grade, fourth grade, third grade, second grade. And each kind of pod or concept would have six classrooms, a resource, and either a speech or an <coughs> kind of right here. You have bathrooms kind of shared uh, from both of these areas. You kind of break out this, and this is kind of boxy right now, but it wouldn't be boxy when it's all said and done. And you kind of create some collaboration areas similar to a little bit what they did over at Sycamore. And, and you could actually kind of have some fun with that to where maybe each grade level was a little bit different. You kind of configure each grade level uh, to have a little bit of uniqueness, things like that. Um, Connecting the two, the, the two kind of classroom wings would be this kind of two-story uh, CLNI and kind of learning stair that would kind of be moving right here. And that could be, and kind of the way that we've imagined that would be kind of on different levels. You'd have, you'd have a, obviously a main stair where kids and teachers could move up and down, but it would also kind of be a learning stair next to it, which is kind of a bigger place where kids can kind of go and get in small groups and, and do research or kind of projects and things like that. And then you have kind of other kind of breakout areas, not just over here, but maybe even on the second floor above the, the CLNI. So it's not just kind of a 2D space, it kind of becomes a 3D space where you have different things going on at different levels. And <coughs> one of the things that we're always trying to do, especially in elementary school, is kind of to give kids kind of a sense of wonder and a sense of, you know, wow, this is really cool and something that they can kind of go home after the first day of school and say, oh my gosh, there's these really cool things in the CLNI or in my, my specific grade pod or something like that that kind of makes it kind of a little bit of theirs. And so, you know, I think there's an opportunity there to do something really neat kind of with this big open space right here. Um, this first floor right here, right adjacent to the CLNI, uh, you have kind of, again, continuing what's going on upstairs, uh, but you have first grade, and uh, uh, kindergarten right here with kind of toilets kind of involved in each of the, in each of the classrooms. And then there'd be a connection piece that connects over to the B wing of the existing, uh, uh, of the existing middle school. And in there we put things like maybe gifted and talented, maybe the STEAM uh, science room. And then we've kind of talked about this maybe lounge area that could be a, a place for middle school kids if, if you had a group of like seventh grade kids that were going to read to a class or something like that, you can kind of pull those into kind of this lounge, kind of more of a casual, comfortable area that could, again, you can kind of do some really neat things in there. And they could read to those kids in that space. They could, they could obviously go to their classroom, but they could also have a space that kind of was, was built specifically for that middle school and elementary school kind of interaction. And so you have that connection there, but it's kind of a it's kind of a connection that there's a little bit of a, it's not just a big open space where you can go from point A to point B. There's, there's kind of a, a, a knuckle there that you have to kind of move through and uh, things like that. Um, as you head to the west, again, you get to what we call kind of the noisy block. Uh, you've got the cafeteria in the kitchen here. You've got the gymnasium down here to the south, kind of with access to the outdoor areas down here. And then you've got music and where you've got music, which has access to the stage, you've got art, which has access to the outside, uh, and then you've got kind of a pre-gym 
that kind of helps them kind of control how kids kind of go to the gym area. So all those noisy activities are kind of in their own block so that if they get crazy and loud there, it doesn't kind of interfere with a lot of uh, the stuff going on in the classroom. When we go to the other side, towards the east, towards the front of the building, uh, we'll kind of pop out do, and do something kind of architecturally here, but you, if you remember, we've got uh, the drive pick up and drop off coming down here. They'd be able to kind of go through a front entry here, which would be similar to, to what you guys kind of have out here on the other side of this wall. Uh, you've got admin uh, to the <coughs> north here with kind of all its offices and workrooms and kind of things like that. And then to the south here, you've got your pre-K, um, uh, your, your FA uh, classrooms and your behavior unit kind of right here, your Moda lab right here. Um, and then they've got kind of a, a separate entry right here if they kind of need to get in and out. Um, and, and that kind of creates those three different wings. If you go back to the site plan, you know, kind of architect. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Yeah. Um, If you kind of look, I mean, we've kind of continued architecturally kind of that finger scheme. We've just kind of extended the fingers here, and then just like the existing building has these east west connectors, that's kind of what we did here. So the idea here is that we were really going to try to really fit into the campus and kind of really kind of match the building uh, as much as possible with kind of how it's laid out on, on the site. And then if we go to the little axon and we haven't really got a lot into the architecture yet but you can kind of see how this kind of works to where you've got these fingers right here in the existing building and then here's where that connection piece is uh, and then here's the east-west access here's the gym the cafeteria back here the two-story uh, you know fifth and fourth upstairs and kindergarten first downstairs and then here's the administration um, and then upstairs would be second and third and kind of how you enter this is, a little, this is a different version of the scheme, but you know, this would kind of continue on straight, things like that. So that's scheme one. Okay, so let's go to the second scheme. All right, so again, what our goal is that we don't give you two things that are exactly the same. We want you guys to have options. So uh, this scheme's a little bit different. Um, um, it kind of breaks, you know, that finger grid that we have kind of going down, this kind of connects into the building in a couple of places, but it kind of breaks away from that kind of really gridded north-south uh, finger plan uh, that's out there right now. Uh, from a site standpoint, um, you know, this is, this is a scheme where we're looking at a couple of different ways of moving uh, through the site to where, um, you know, potentially we could have bus traffic on uh, Peabody Road to where we kind of pull in here, but then we kind of pull back out here or potentially even pull back out to Peabody. Um, we're looking at a couple of different ways with the parking up here to kind of modify uh, the area getting in so that we get a little bit more stack space. So there's a little bit more manipulation from a site standpoint here. Uh, but you can kind of tell the, the building has kind of moved up. It's still fairly in the same place, but it's kind of sliding around uh, the southwest or southeast corner of the school to get a little bit more frontage, kind of to 290 and, <coughs> and uh, to the north. Um, so. Uh, but, but again, going back to those outdoor areas, there was, you know, again, going to both schools, there was a really strong focus to kind of have, you know, both easy access to those outdoor spaces and then also to have some of those separation of what's dedicated for elementary school, what's dedicated uh, for middle school. So that we've got kind of this over here, which just basically mirrors what's there right now. And then in this particular scheme, we actually have, and we could do this for the other scheme too, is we actually maybe have the track kind of going through the trees, which might be kind of an interesting difference right there to where it kind of goes through the trees and you've got shade, not shade, things like that. So uh, those are some things that this scheme is kind of looking at right now. Um, the building itself uh, looks to connect in kind of two ways, a direct connection that potentially could use some of the second floor uh, 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 wing A classrooms and then kind of a an indirect connection uh, kind of into B right here. So if there would be a couple of ways to kind of access uh, the middle school in this scheme. And you could certainly come in in this scheme and kind of do some of those same things where that kind of lounge space or something like that. You could have this over in the B area or you can even have that up in the, in the second floor of the A wing up here. Um, this is also a two-story scheme. Um, you've got the entry of the building kind of here to the northeast. Um, you've got classrooms that kind of create kind of the middle part of the, the, this scheme right here. 
and then those kind of loud areas would be <coughs> down here to the southwest, kind of facing uh, the fields and things like that. Uh, you also have some classrooms that extend only on the second floor that connect into the existing A wing right here. On the first floor, it would actually be open so that you could kind of have a covered area underneath that second floor where you could put kind of an outdoor classroom or something like that. You kind of have this covered area that could be used for different functions outside if you if, if a class wanted to bring a, uh, a teacher wanted to bring a class outside or anything like that. Okay. All right, so first floor, second floor. I'll start with the second floor and move down to the first floor. Um, again, the entry of the building right here. It's kind of, you have a center kind of rotunda here that kind of acts as your your kind of uh, focal point kind of move in different directions. I got point on the side right here. Um, um, so you kind of come up with kind of again some type of open stair uh, that both has a stair component, maybe also kind of a learning stair. Maybe that learning stair kind of is in different areas or something like that. Again, this is certainly an area that we want to really focus in on and design um, if we kind of move forward this scheme. Uh, you kind of go two ways. Uh, you kind of go uh, a little bit north and west, kind of connect. This is this is A wing right here, and. We've got fourth grade that kind of extends out here with some collaboration space. Again, this corridor, you kind of look at furnishings and things going on in this corridor. And then you access into uh, the second floor A wing right there where you have fifth grade and you have your, your steam lab here, you have your classrooms and resource room, kind of that pod. Each of these is kind of its own pod but in a little bit of a different shape. And then as you move into kind of the heart of the building right here, uh, you've got second and third grade here with kind of a collective uh, collaboration area here that's kind of has a, an area that kind of you can get natural light down to the first floor and kind of things like that. And then moving to the first floor, kind of going from the back to the front. Um, again, you've got kind of your noisy spaces kind of combined together right here. You've got your cafeteria kitchen. Uh, you've got your PE, your music, your art, and your, your PE prep gym kind of over here. Uh, and then this first floor is basically exactly kind of what's on the second floor here. We've got um, first grade and kindergarten and then up here in the front pre-K right here. The collaboration area kind of in the center would kind of mirror maybe the opening or you'd kind of see some things go up between those uh, two floors right there. You know, maybe part of this is raised, you've got some different flooring material, you've got some, maybe you've, you've got some kind of closed in glass collaboration boxes or something there. You kind of see like a whole lot of stuff kind of going on in here that, you know, when you're kind of looking through, you want to kind of have this neat terminus point right here. So kind of what goes on right here becomes really important so that you can almost see potentially all the way through the building uh, right there. But you want to make sure that anything that you do in here doesn't kind of block that, that, that path of uh, view through this kind of uh, big open space right here. As you move towards the front, Again, you've got kind of your big kind of uh, point where you kind of either go up or you go that way, that way, that way, entry kind of right here. So that becomes kind of the heart of your school right here. You've got your seal and eye off of that, which also kind of has access to this under the second floor kind of covered area right here and also access out into this kind of protected courtyard. On the other side, you've got admin and teacher support. Uh, and then you've got breakout, or you've got uh, your behavior unit and your FA unit right here, and some other kind of support areas right there. And then here's kind of the entry of your building right here. And then from okay. And then this is kind of how that would look. So this would be the front of the building right here. This is a little bit of a different scheme. This is kind of scooted over to the right here. So but this rotunda is actually kind of in line with that area right there. But the idea is that you kind of have this big central point that would kind of pop up and have natural light. And we kind of came up with this, you know, over at Sycamore, they've got that, you know, the CLNI, and I, they've got that neat rotunda that kind of sticks up there. So the idea is that, you know, is there a way that we can kind of mirror and kind of take that into this new project? And so you can kind of see kind of almost a thematic kind of connection from elementary school to elementary school. Um, and this is that big, you know, where you've got the, the, the first and second floor. Uh, classrooms, the back area back there are kind of your noisy kind of double volume spaces right there. And then right here you can kind of see that second <laughs> you can see that second floor connection right here with the first floor kind of open underneath here and that's where it kind of accesses up to uh, the second floor of anything right there. 
All right, so where are we right now? So again, the two things, you know, as we move into design development, it will be having our consultant kickoff and our regulatory meetings and updates and things like that. Um, uh, now that we're kind of, we know where the school potentially could be, and here in the next week or so, we'll have kind of the scheme that we kind of move forward with. Now we can kind of start some of the middle school design, renovation, and kind of things like that, because we know kind of where things are connecting and stuff like that, so that gets kicked off. Um, again, we have two review meetings uh, in design development. Uh, this right here, and number five, this is kind of at the end of design development. Um, We'll have a teacher open house. We talked to those 55 or so teachers here at this school. We talked to about uh, 12 or 14 teachers over the middle school. We're going to set up at both schools, kind of at 50% design development, where we have a little bit better worked out plan and site plan. And we'll sit down, and any teacher who wants to come and talk to us, they can kind of come and talk to us. And you know, where's my room, and how do I get from here to the gym, or stuff like that. So we'll give all the teachers who kind of gave their time a, an ability to kind of come back and give us their feedback on the actual plan. And we'll do that a number of times throughout the process because we want to make sure that we're kind of staying on course for what they're expecting. Uh, we'll get to the end of 100% design development probably sometime in September or so. And then we'll come back and do the same thing here. So we'll, we'll take to the board, we'll take to you guys, we'll have campus, you know, tomorrow we're going to meet with the leadership groups at, at, uh, at, at Walnut Springs, and we'll take it to both leadership groups kind of at both campuses at the end of uh, design development. So again, we want to make sure that we give everyone opportunities to kind of give us feedback and and I can't tell you how important this is to us is to get this feedback from you guys and to kind of hear your concerns and thoughts and things like that. It really kind of helps us drive down the path that, that makes the most sense for you. So we really uh, appreciate it and we will give you more opportunities to do it as we kind of move forward.